Hi Wanderers, welcome back to Jog My Memory. This video is looking at Earth's energy balance for grade 10 and 11 geography. What are the effects of unequal heating of the Earth's energy balance? Basically, you have incoming radiation from the sun, which is mainly higher energy shortwave radiation. This heats the Earth's surface and the heat is unevenly distributed over a smaller area. The heated Earth radiates lower energy long wave infrared energy back into the atmosphere. This is known as your outgoing radiation. This causes the atmosphere to be heated. The poles are colder due to the sun's rays traveling through a thicker atmosphere and causing a loss of energy. The incoming radiation is spread over a large area. Now let's look at the Earth's axis. The Earth's axis and revolution around the Sun causes seasons. Revolution refers to the Earth orbiting once every 365 and a quarter days. Re rotation refers to the Earth turning once every 24 hours. The tilt refers to the Earth's axis being tilted 23 and a half degrees from the perpendicular. The sphericity causes uneven insulation. But why is it hotter in summer than in winter? Summer involves the Earth being tilted towards the sun. Therefore, Earth retains more incoming solar radiation, causing longer daytime hours. In winter, the Earth is tilted away from the sun. Therefore, Earth retains less incoming solar radiation, causing shorter daytime hours. But how do winds contribute to heat transfer? Basically, the uneven heating of the Earth causes pressure differences. Therefore, this creates a pressure gradient force and causes wind to blow from regions of high pressure to regions of low pressure. The pressure differences cause cold, dry winds to flow from the polar high pressure to the equatorial low pressure. The equator has warm, moist air that rises and diverges in the upper atmosphere and flows to the poles. The poles have air that cools, becomes more dense and sinks down back towards the surface. Remembering this process can be strenuous. So let's look at the following diagram. Let's use the acronym CUTS. Basically, C refers to the convergence of horizontal air from high pressure regions to low pressure regions. Thereafter, you have U, where air is heated, becomes less dense and is uplifted. The rising air causes low pressure. Thereafter, we have D. There's divergence of horizontal air from your high pressure to your low pressure again. And thereafter, S. Your Air cools, becomes more dense and sinks. The sinking air causes high pressure. You can see from this diagram that your high pressure and low pressure regions are synchronized. But how do oceans contribute to heat transfer? You have your surface ocean currents and your deep ocean currents. For your surface ocean currents, you have warmer ocean currents that carry stored heat energy from the tropics towards the polar latitudes. The colder ocean currents carry water to the lower latitudes where it is eventually heated again. The Coriolis force causes surface currents to curve to the right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere. Your deep ocean currents have differences in the density of ocean water depending on its temperature and salinity. Your surface ocean currents together with your deep ocean currents creates your ocean conveyor belt. The reference I used for this video is the Geography Grade 11 study guide by the Via Africa Publishers. Please like this video if you found it useful, comment if you have any inquiries, share with friends and family who may find it useful, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Feel free to drop me an email on jogmymemory at gmail.com. 
continue jogging your memory and keep wandering with me. Good luck!